and Richard cute, Blackburn. Right, right. Yeah. Mary is the star of Eating Raoul, and we promised you this. Unfortunately, she couldn't be live in the studio tonight, so we're doing it this afternoon. It's the same day, anyway. And we're very thrilled that they could be here, and Richard was one of the writers on the film. And we're going to be talking with them about Eating Raoul, the big surprise hit of the New York Film Festival, which is opening this Friday at a theater near you. <laughs> right, 68th Street Playhouse. Right, we don't want to plug the theater, but oh, that's no. where it is. It's just Oops. informational. <laughs> right. Okay, Mary, I've known you since I was eight years old. This is true. This is true. And all my life I was told, why can't you be more like Mary Warnoff? Mary is brilliant, she gets good grades at school. You never knew this, I'm sure. <laughs> no, because I was getting very bad grades in school and I was playing hooky. Oh, well, they didn't tell me that. They always said that they Mary was, well, they had to use something. All parents lie to kids. Right. And the way our families met was sort of unusual. Yeah, your brother went up to my mother, who looked like your mother, right. and called her mommy. Right. And had the shock of his life. <laughs> and said, you're not my mommy! And cried his eyes out. And your mother traipsed him around for about an hour at this hotel in... Uh, Pennsylvania somewhere. I don't even know where it is. I remember. And we, our families became very close friends for many years and there was many outings and vacations and visits to each other's homes. And vacations with mom and dad. Yes. <laughs> and I was wondering, in this movie you portray sort of the, the Blands, Mary and Paul Bland, the 50s characters. Well they're uh, a very American couple from the valley, as we call it, in, Cali in California. The valley means very middle class. Yes. And uh, they're a couple that, um, well, they don't like sex. Yes. And uh, they protect each other from sex. And um, they're very 50s. They sleep in twin beds. They <laughs> wear matching pajamas. And they don't have sex. But your parents were not like this, I presume. I don't remember my parents ever talking about sex. Uh -huh. And the only thing my mother ever said to me is that if you're not a virgin, the boys won't like you. <laughs> How wrong she was. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dick is laughing. <laughs> Dick, you were a writer on this film. That's right. And you must be thrilled and proud because it's doing so well. Yes, well, I began the movie uh, with Paul and I wrote the first draft of the film, so I was like, principal writer and also, in a sense, co-director um, of the movie. So I've been involved with it from the beginning and um, it's largely a, a total collaborative thing. Mm -hmm. uh, a team effort. A big team effort. That not only was the people that worked on the movie, but just people that gave us suggestions. Directors like Joe Dante and producers like uh -huh. John Davison who just lent their input to it to get it to where it was today. For instance, being a comedy, we had to do an awful lot of screenings and winnowing it down until the form it is now because a lot of stuff is just extra fat on it that we had to like take off. Uh -huh. And all those people that he mentioned, they're people that we had met working for Corman, Roger Corman, yes. who produces very, very low budget films. And you appeared in many of those low budget films. Yes. <laughs> Yes. yes. You're yeah. proud many, to say. Many, many. Yes, no, actually, I, I, I don't mean to put that down. I have a tremendous cult following. Yes, indeed. And uh, they've been really nice to me. Well, you also started off in the avant-garde theater or movies with Andy Warhol's Chelsea Girls and, and various movies of that sort. And now you're in the mainstream. Yes, this movie, I think, is very It's very mainstream. And I think that it's such a success that this is going to be it for you. You're going to be a big it. star. Yeah. You're going to be well this known. It. Yeah, you can relax now. Oh. <laughs> well, it's Good not shape. like you're a kid. You've been working at it for years. And we I'm won't a say. teenager. <laughs> oh, I'm yes, a trans right. am. Okay, that's right. We're going to talk right. about L.A. But before we do, maybe we, we should go to the first clip. Oh, right. So everybody knows what we're talking about. Well, the first clip is one of the swingers attacks Mary and uh, Paul and Mary kill him and that's the beginning of how they get money to get their country kitchen restaurant. Okay, can we go to that clip now? We're there. Oh. Paul! Paul! Stop it! You killed him! You killed him! What? He's dead. He's
he's really dead. Oh, that's all I need. What are we going to do now? We can't call the police this time. I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe we could take him out into the hallway by the swingers' apartment and they'll think that he fell down accidentally. Mary, look at this. Huh? This guy is a junior officer at the Bank of San Fernando. He must have $600 here. Ed Fosley Jr., credit card division. You suppose he's the one that canceled our credit card? <gasps> James. James. What am I going to say? Um, put that back. Take the money and put that back where you found it. But Mary, what if, what if they go through the wallet? What if the police go through the wallet and find the money missing? You leave a little bit of the money and they don't mind. I don't want to leave any of the money. Paul! Oh. Mary, this guy threw up on our carpet. He canceled our instant cash card. He owes us at least $600. I'm not... Shh. Just a minute! The scene was, um... Improvised. Yes. A lot of it was improvised. All of that money stuff and uh, you leave a little bit of the money and they don't mind. Yeah, right. Totally invented. That wasn't what well, I wrote. Very funny. Because it's, 